So Uncle Doug. Ah. <laughs> it's, uh, it's October. It is. It's October, and what it's happens? It's the end of October. Yes, as we the waning days. Yeah. Of, yeah. of autumn before it turns to winter, and the the membrane between the worlds begins to thin. Yes. It's the most spookiest time of the year. Uh, October is my favorite month. I love October. So really, yes, yep. Hmm. I there love you it. go. And I, I used to, I used to when I was a kid, I loved Halloween, and then I hated it for a long time because it turned into just horrible frat boys and their girlfriends' dresses screaming. Yeah. And then, uh, and then I started liking it again. I don't know why. So here we are. Well, Dan, yeah. what do you know? Well, here's the thing. Uh, since it is that time of the year, I thought I'd do the How to Heretics first ever. Watch out for. Ooh. <laughs> That's right. That was unrehearsed. That was. <laughs> that's, that's can you believe that? That's the level of talent we bring to this show. That's, that is the that is the up for it nature of of the how to heritage. <laughs> There's three part <laughs> harmony, two countries. Fuck me. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Somebody please fuck Mark. Anyway, uh, <laughs> that's right. I'm telling ghost stories, y'all. Um, and but before we dive in, uh, some questions for you fellas. Hmm. Yeah. First, without getting too in depth with it. Yeah. Do you believe in ghosts? Absolutely. 100%. <laughs> do you? Yeah, of course. You do, Doug? Yeah. Uh, it feels uh, a little... I can't tell if you're being facetious right now. <laughs> of course uh, I don't believe in ghosts. Okay, well, okay. Uh, hey, what, what do you mean of course? I, I don't, but I have had two experiences. One which was, I later found, uh, explained away on YouTube as a really stupid phenomenon that I'm embarrassed that I was ever scared by. <laughs> and, and one I think may have been a bad dream that I ha- was not fully awake from. But I'm okay. going to say no asterisk. I shouldn't believe in ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, uh, that was like one of the questions on the job application to, to get uh, this podcast. Yeah, but we fudged all of those questions. <laughs> all of us lied on the application to ourselves. And then when it said what my race was, there was only a box for white. <laughs> well, a little weird, right? Wow. Uh, we're all fired all of it a sudden. It actually said delightsome. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my God. Okay. Uh, second question. What percentage of Americans would you guess believe in ghosts? I'm afraid of this answer. It, it's got to be like north 80. of 80. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, according to a recent YouGov poll that was this year, 45% oh, of Americans really? believe in ghosts. <laughs> which, like you guys, I'm a little surprised at how low that is yeah. considering the Christian nature considering, of our country. Yeah, this country. Yeah. And and the credulous nature of this country. For sure. Uh, so, yeah, there you go. Uh, it's only 45%. Uh, also the same number for demons, but we're not talking about that right I- now. I'd love to see mm. what that overlay is of that number of, you know, what also those people, like, who do they vote for? Yeah. Well, uh, oh, no, that's actually there. Oh, really? Uh, oh. And even though it is a smaller number for Democrats than it is for Republicans, hmm. it's still a substantial number. Huh. Uh, so, huh. Uh, yeah, don't get proud of your tribe just because they're just as dumb as the other ones <laughs> or almost as dumb yeah. anyway look I, I or maybe hey there are ghosts almost as dumb is technically smarter <laughs> <laughs> i'll take it <clears throat> i'll take it but wait I, I i don't mean to tip my hand too quickly because the truth is do we know uh mm. whether there are ghosts or not um look i'm just going to tell you it's the reason that these people believe in ghosts is not based on nothing. Mm. Uh, as a matter of fact, just today on a Facebook, a friend uh, posted a link to an article that on a site called Awareness Act, which I'm not familiar with. Um, but the post uh, from the, was from their science desk, and it came with this headline. Science confirms that cats and dogs can see, quote, spirits and other frequencies we can't. Wait, where, where did you read where that? Was this? Yeah, that was a that was awareness act, uh, and the article references what appears to be a genuinely well done study by City University of London. Okay, mm-hmm. uh, and let me tell you, I've seen some pets engage in some very spooky behavior. My friend's Bernese Mountain Dog, for instance, gets very scared crossing a specific part of their floor. He's fine over most of the house. 
But in that one spot, he has to pause, sometimes for minutes, building up the courage to cross that three feet of space. He whines, he pants, he drools, he's visibly shook by this tiny area. I'm convinced. What could cause this? (laughs) But it's not just animals. Here's a true story told in a TED Talk uh, by noted skeptic and host of the Ono, Ross, and Carrie podcast, Carrie Poppy. Uh, she was living in a small, slightly run-down guest house, uh, that sort of thing, in the backyard of another house. Mm-hmm. One night, this is in Los Angeles, and this is true. She, she claims this to be a true story. One night, she got a creepy, spooky feeling that she just couldn't shake, uh, like she was being watched. She tried to ignore it, but it just got stronger. Then she started to feel pressure in her chest, a sinking feeling. She said it was, quote, like when you get bad news. Hmm. Uh, and this just wasn't just one night. It kept happening and getting worse. She would search the little shack and continually found no one there. But the feeling was unmistakable that she was being watched. Hmm. Then she started to hear noises. <clears throat> Like a whispered whoosh, almost like, the, and it was almost as if the sound was passing through her. Whoosh. She confided to a friend uh, that, that though she knew it sounded crazy, she now was convinced that she was being haunted. She was terrified to go home and was frequently crying herself to sleep at night. Her friend told her to do a, a cleansing ritual, so she bought some sage and burned it <laughs> through the house yelling at this ghost to get out to no avail. Hmm. Spooky. Sure. Yeah. Do you get a sense of dread in your attic or basement? Yeah. Or in just Ghostbusters your... reference. Come on, guys. I know. <laughs> I, right? Well, yeah. I got another Ghostbusters reference later, but okay, fine. Yeah. Uh, and yes, here's the thing. Uh, this is a, here's another story. This was told by uh, my friend Adam. He actually created a wonderful uh, spooky produced piece in episode 155 of Thank God I'm Atheist, which is mm-hmm. going back a ways for TGIA. Um, but it's uh, it's right at about the one hour and two minute mark. If you want to pause this show, go and listen to Adam's re- retelling of this because it's actually really, really creepy and spooky. Uh, and then come back here. All right. You're back. Great. Okay. So <laughs> are you scared? While you were gone. <laughs> While you were gone. No, here's, here's the, the sort of truncated version um, of what Adam said. He was working at a secure care facility for mentally disturbed youth. Uh, and this is true. And it was, uh, it, housed, it was housed in a former rest home and was one of those spooky old cinder block and linoleum buildings from the 70s. Mm. Uh, he was talking to a patient who had called, him, called out to him from his room. And as they spoke... Adam heard the motion sensor in the hallway that they turned on after curfew go off, but he figured it was him that likely set it off. Then he heard another staff member hollering about something. Adam uh, finished up with the kid and walked to uh, and and, and went to talk to the team leader in the control room. This is the room with all of the monitors and everything uh, from from the security cameras. Mm -hmm. Who was in that room with you? The team leader asked. He said no one was in there with them. Then the team leader rewound the security tape and showed him there was a grainy but distinct image of a third person moving around in the room that he was just in by the window. Hmm. These are firsthand accounts of real phenomena. So to all you skeptics out there, I ask you, what do you think was happening in these stories? How can you not believe in ghosts with evidence like this? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Somebody said something. Well, well uh, uh, evidence from anecdote is not necessarily evidence, but it certainly can be convincing to the person going through that experience. Well, and these, you know, these are people, you know, Adam is a man that I knew and sure. trusted. I've seen the thing happen with the dog, my mm-hmm. own self. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know what I mean? And Carrie Poppy is actually, a, a, her whole show is devoted to skepticism. Mm. Yeah. She's Debunking a, she's, things, yeah. Yeah, so... Yeah. The question is, well, what do we have going on here? If that's not good enough for you, okay, so uh, if that's not good enough for you, I present to you the show Ghost Hunters. Yes. Which <laughs> features two paranormal investigators using scientific equipment to find evidence of spooks, specters, and ghosts. That was your, your Ghostbusters reference right there. Yes. <laughs> uh, like so many investigators all over the world, 
They go into purportedly haunted places and monitor temperature changes, spikes in electromagnetic field. Uh, They listen for EVPs, which are electronic voice phenomena on highly sensitive audio equipment. They look for strange anomalies in their thermographic and night vision video recordings. Uh, Listen, a show that has been on for more than a decade, could they have done 218 episodes and nine specials (laughs) if there was really nothing to the work that they do? Yeah, because that's how TV works. It's they totally can. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It, it turns out that yes, absolutely, they yeah. they very much can. And right. and because the and just because uh, nothing that these two goofball plumbers and yes, both of the guys on the ghost ghost hunters apparently worked for Roto Rooter before they hit paranormal pay dirt. <laughs> yeah, uh, none of, nothing that they have ever managed to uh, show has proven anything except that most television viewers aren't very well-versed in how science works. The article that I referenced earlier about cats and dogs seeing spirits, Mm -hmm. it was linked to by one of my more credulous Facebook friends. It did indeed reference some good science, but all the science said was that the cats and dogs can probably see light in the (laughs) ultraviolet spectrum, which we can't see. (laughs) Then this idiotic website, Awareness Act, wrote a post that took that finding and postulated with no evidence whatsoever that this must mean that they can must also be able to see ghosts. Yes, the only you know, explanation the only explanation is ghosts. I mean, come right. on. Right. You know, because sometimes they seem to be staring at nothing or are afraid of sections of a house. <laughs> this yeah. is why we don't believe the internet, kids. <laughs> I, I so what I, I, I have a, cat, a wonderful cat that you guys know yes. that uh, is, is a sweet old lady now. And one time, to our, my, my great horror, I kind of accidentally closed a door on her a little bit. I didn't oh, see dear. her there. Yeah. And, and she was fine, but it, it didn't look fine. And that was 15 years ago, and she's still afraid of doors. Like every time she walks <laughs> past a door, she slows way down and looks at it, like going through doors. You know, now if you didn't know that that had happened, you might say, "Huh, weird." Yeah, what's wrong with her when she comes to a door? Because mm. doors are portals to another universe. <laughs> but the portals through which go, like, you might well say that. Yes, yeah. or you might say that she's sensing something on the other side. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what was going on with my friend's dog then? Well, he's an idiot. <laughs> and that little stretch of floor is the transition from the original house to an addition that they put on many years ago. And the floor has a very slight slope there, like almost imperceptible, but it exists. And yeah. when they took out the carpet and put in the laminate flooring, he slipped there a time or two. And now he's just terrified all the time as yeah. he crosses. He crosses that little bit of floor several times a day, but has to work up the courage Every single time. Like my kitty. Yeah. He's just a poor dopey dog. What about Carrie Poppy's spooky haunting? Well, she sought help on the internet and found a group of paranormal researchers (laughs) who actually gave her a very scary and very true warning. But this wasn't a group of ding-dongs like most of the ones on, like the ones on Ghost Hunters or most of the paranormal researchers. These were skeptics. And they told her that they had seen what she described before. A sense of unknown dread, heaviness in the chest, auditory anomalies. These are all symptoms of carbon monoxide poisoning. Yes, exactly. (laughs) She had a gas leak or carbon monoxide poisoning. She called her gas company who came out and told her that, yes, she did indeed have a gas leak, and it could have killed her if she had waited a minute longer to call them. Yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, definitely get carbon monoxide uh, detectors in your homes. Yeah. Very important. Well, I mean, she was almost killed by an invisible force. I she mean, was. You know? Like, mm-hmm. literally, there was a there was a, an unseen menace in her yeah, house. Truthfully. That is true. And her body was trying to tell her something, for sure. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and this uh, turns out to be a, a very common explanation sure. of haunted houses. If you start to experience any of those symptoms in a specific place... A, get out, because yeah. not because of a poltergeist, but because of a very real poisoning problem. Yeah, if your anxiety lasts more than four hours. See a doctor. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, and I, I, and I also read this, get it checked out uh, for carbon monoxide. I don't know if you read this article, Dan, but I, <clears throat> I remember reading this fascinating article a few years ago, and I can't remember who it was by, but it was a scientist who uh, uh, kept seeing a form in the room with him in his lab. 
He kept mm. seeing a shape uh, forming on his, like on his right side. And every I do time he'd look this. over there, it would kind of go away. Yeah. And, and so he's like, okay, well, I'm a scientist. I've got to figure out what this is about. So he, after like a ton of analysis, what he figured out was there was some air takeaway system in his lab yep. that had a fan that spun at a certain frequency and it very slightly distorted the shape, the, the frequency very slightly distorted the shape of his eyeball. Yeah. On his on his right side because that's where the fan was. And so there was wow. this visual anomaly that would occur every time the fan came on. Wow. Um, and our brains are programmed to look for human uh shapes yeah. in whatever we see. And, and human which is motivations. why we see we yeah. see faces in clouds and whatever. Right. But if your brain can't doesn't know how to interpret the weird that's happening over here. Yeah, yeah, it'll start to it'll make it into a shape. We're pattern seeking animals, and and there's evolutionary reasons for that. Yeah, yeah. It's like there, there's, we talked about this in an yeah. early episode. Dan, exactly, Dan did a whole yeah. segment on it. Yeah, if there's a rustle in the grass, your brain will assume it's something menacing because if it's wrong, you're okay. If it's right, it just saved your life. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. If there's a bustle in your hedgerow, don't be <laughs> alarmed. <right>. Now <laughs> it will search for a shape. It will search for a face to to see if there's you know a tiger in there. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so. What about Adam? My friend Adam yeah. who was spooked by what he saw on the security tape at the mental hospital where he worked. Well, I can't 100% guarantee that it wasn't a ghost, but I can tell you that I wasn't using a figure of speech when I said they used security tape. And I can tell you that it was a common practice back in the days before digital video recording to reuse to tapes. To rewind it. And I can tell you that reused security tapes were often the source of proof of ghosts. Interesting. So uh, you can do your own research from there. And it's a visual artifact on a magnetic uh, a tape medium. Yeah. 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 Anyway, uh, you know, I, I hate to ruin a good spooky story, but here's the thing. Uh, I think the point that I'm getting at here is that it's not that there's no such thing as ghosts. There's no such thing as ghosts. But that's not the point that I'm getting at. Hell, we can't even get believers to agree on what the hell a ghost is. Right. Is it mm. physical? Is it an energy? If it's an energy, do the laws of thermodynamics apply to it? Because then that's wildly problematic. <laughs> and if it's not, well, then it's outside of the realm of natural physics, and that's even wildlier problematic. Right. Are ghosts, are ghosts former people? Do, we, do they carry with them the memories and experiences of the corporeal selves? How? In what medium is that information carried? What is it? What keeps that information altogether? Right. Because, right. again, thermodynamics tells us that that shouldn't be possible. Yeah. You know, right. there's a, a science, scientist, Brian Cox, even went so far as to say that if there were ghosts... The Large Hedron Collider at CERN would have discovered them. Right. Mm. The and, point. And wouldn't there be a lot of them? Yeah. Well, you'd think. Leaving that aside. Yeah. Why aren't? Why aren't they? Yeah. Why are so many of them gone? Right. And a few of them are around. Yeah. So what? And who's why doing are that they math? all Victorian children? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and right. Why Mostly are they girls. Just, why are they just standing there with their hair covering their face? Right. It's yeah. creepy. So anyway, the point is. When there is unexplained phenomena, either properly investigate it or, uh, you know, without deciding what it is first or leave properly label, leave it properly labeled as unexplained. It's when we decide that we must know what it is that we get ourselves into trouble. Right. It's when you use the word ghost or fucking aliens or whatever. Uh -huh. that, that's when you're getting into bad territory because you're just guessing and then deciding that your guess is right. Right. Well, I have a little story for you about that. Okay. Just the other day, and I am, listen, I don't believe in ghosts. I am on this podcast because I don't believe in stuff like that. Okay. Um, but my buddy was looking at a property in here in Salt Lake City that was potentially just for the, like, to demo the house off of it and develop it. Sure. And, but we went to look at the property. It was an old crack house, like re legit crack house. Um, you know, I, we couldn't get the key to open, so I reached in through the hole that the police had kicked in the door uh -huh. to get the doorknob open. There were troubling stains all over the carpet. Um, and then we went to look in the basement. And it was one of those old Salt Lake basements where the, the stairs are really steep and the, the mm -hmm. ceiling down there is really low. And I went down there first, and it was one of those houses where you have to kind of announce yourself just to make <laughs> sure there's no one down there. We went down to the basement. I found the little light, pulled the string. 
We looked around. There were four pages of the Book of Mormon, and by the way, lying on the ground. <laughs> mm-hmm. Didn't didn't touch him. <laughs> so I, he, my buddy went up the stairs. I turned the light off, and in the three or four feet it took to get to the stairs, I experienced such a sense of terror and dread. Like, I ran up the stairs. It, it scared the hell <laughs> out of me. It's every horror movie, Doug. You've totally. been conditioned by every fucking horror movie you've ever seen to know that a hand is going to come through those open stairs and grab yep. you. Yeah. Yep, exactly. And it's going to so be I'm, a Victorian little girl. That's right. I, but yeah. I, I mean, I, I'd still, I still fall for it, you know? Well, I mean, it's, I, we have uh, <laughs> unconscious brains that are working overtime at all times yeah. looking for danger. Yep. And sometimes it just mag- manufactures it. Le- yeah. There are some interesting other phenomena that can cause a lot of, like, a lot of these uh, ghost sightings or whatever. Mm. Sleep paralysis is a really interesting thing mm-hmm. that causes a lot of people to believe for sure that they uh, that, that they saw ghosts or whatever. Um, there's a lot. There's a lot of actual sleep problems that get people there. Toxic mold in houses. Mm. Uh, can cause myco- mycotoxins are apparently uh, really good at causing delirium, dementia, pain, that sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, you're shrooming. You're, you're on shrooms at that point, right? Only not the good kind. <clears throat> yeah. Um, and I- obviously, there's schizophrenia and dementia that can, that can cause this right. sort of thing. And can I give you a little, a little personal anecdote of my own? It'll be very quick. <clears throat> is, sure, is, please do. As a young skeptic. Is this, the pre- one, is this the one that you referenced earlier? It's, yeah, so this is the one that I, I later found out what causes it. But uh-huh. so I was working on a movie, <clears throat> on a, some horror movies in Wisconsin. I was about 20 years old, and I went with a group of friends from the movie one weekend, and we drove up. Uh, and this is, a, this is a well-known phenomenon. This is called the Paulding Light, right? So to our friends in northern, uh, northern Wisconsin, we'll know this crazy thing. So you go up by Land Lakes, Wisconsin. You drive into this forest, dark as fuck, you know, and it was a moonless night, and you park – and you turn off the lights, and there's a, there's a forest service sign with Casper on it. I'm not even kidding. And it says, park here to see the Paulding light. So we all kind of wanted to be scared. It was super late at night. So we, you know, in the fall, it was around Halloween. So we parked, we got out, and we're standing there. And all of a sudden, we saw these, these red and uh, white lights kind of coming through the forest. And they just kind of danced around, and it was mysterious and spooky as fuck. And I always wondered, what was that? And there was a story about a train conductor, right? Some crazy train conductor. and Of course. Trying nice. to get, save a woman or some thing, thing, thing. Well, it turns out there's a highway about three miles down. And with the atmospheric perspective in the forest, you think those taillights and headlights going in two directions are a ghost. And you look it up. It's on YouTube. <laughs> That's the point. But in the moment, the hair on the back of my neck stood up. We were in sure. the, Super dark forest, classic horror movie setting, right? And it was uh, super scary, which was fun, right? I, I I have to say I enjoyed that part of it, like actually being scared about it. Yeah, that's cool. <clears throat> which is why we tell each other ghost stories, and you know, we 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 kids love to say Bloody Mary and scare themselves, and yeah. and I, that's just part of human nature, yeah. Right, yeah. It's part of like maturing through levels of courage, but uh, it, it's also bullshit. Yeah, it's all the. the I I really kind of hate to to like make a declaration because people love their bubbles and whatever. But yeah, yeah. Get, uh, the truth is, it's all bullshit. It's all <laughs> stupid bullshit. Yep. All I'm the same sorry. rules apply to ghosts that apply to gods. You can write into us and tell us that you that we're wrong and and all the reasons why and 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 maybe you can convince us. But and tonight, Uncle Dan will be visited by three ghosts. Yes, exactly. One of them is. Uh, the ghost of traffic f- past, and the other is the ghost of traffic future. Tra- traffic southbound and traffic northbound. That's so. right. Yeah, exactly. So there you go. Uh, spooky ghost story. Watch out ha- for boo. Have a happy Halloween, everybody. <laughs> All right. Let's move on. We'll move on. 